Hi, I'm Chris Johnson. I'm speaking today with Florida Center President David Snell, who just got in late last night from El Salvador. But you brought back some great photos, as did our friend Jeff Cardwell at People Helping People Network. And I've got a few questions I need to ask you about some of these photos I've seen about our thriving operation down there. I see a lot of scale in these photos. I mean, a lot of residences, large communities. Last year, we celebrated our 500th house down there. It's possible we'll be celebrating our 1,000th very soon. Uh, what's behind all this rapid growth? Well, uh, there are a number of things, actually. This is uh, what we have in El Salvador is a great confluence of wealth. We have a, a donor, New Story Charity, that has given millions for this project. We are well connected with the Ministry of Housing, and uh, so we have access to land and to services. And we have a team down there that's just unbeatable. Now we did dedicate our 500th house, and this year, before the year is out, we'll probably dedicate our 501st. They're talking about having their thousandth and first house. Uh, and next year they plan to build another thousand. So it, it is truly, in, in terms of scale, uh, it's our, uh, the largest project in the Fuller Center. Have we peaked in terms of how many houses we can build? We can build as many houses as we can raise money for. The need in, uh, in El Salvador is great, as it is in so much of the developing world. Uh, the poverty is, is real, and uh, the hundreds of thousands of families living uh, in very, very substandard uh, circumstances. So we haven't peaked. It'll be a long time before we get to that point. Okay, this ministry has always been about more than houses. Now we can talk about that till we're blue in the face, but you witnessed some things that really brought that home. You know, it's, we, we just saw some wonderful things happening there. Um, uh, our partner organization, People Helping People, uh, has a, uh, a clinic, a, a women's clinic, a dental clinic, and a culinary school there in San Salvador. And uh, I visited with a number of women and children who were at the clinic that day, getting their teeth cleaned and getting checked out. I talked to a number of kids and, or students at the culinary school, and um, they all came from Nuevo Cuscatlan. They all came from our building site. Uh, the women all checked out well, and the kids uh, were a little frightened but happy to have their teeth clean. But the culinary school has over a 90% placement rate in the students that graduate from there. So they, uh, these are folks from our community who are going into uh, the real world with skills, and they're able to make a living. I ran into a woman at our uh, Nuevo Cuscatlan II site, uh, a middle-aged woman, who was shoveling sand through a, a screen. This is a big part of projects down there, is getting the, the sand sifted. And she was just working a little hard out. It was hot. And uh, I went and talked to her. Well, she was a homeowner. And uh, she got, got her, her home. She was just delighted to have a decent place to live. And she needed to pay for it. And so she needed a job. And this was a job. And she loved it. Um, we have uh, at that same site, that Nuevo Cuscatlan, the, the, the director of the project there is a young man I, I, in his mid-twenties perhaps. Um, he came from the other Cuscatlan project. His mother had a house there and he watched the workmen and he liked what he saw. So he came over and asked for a job and he was just a peon, lifting bricks and sifting sand and doing whatever he needed doing. But he was obviously sharp. He was a very bright boy. And he just learned and learned and learned. And now he's heading up the project there. So we have these wonderful stories of people coming out of our, our building projects who are creating uh, lives for themselves in a significant way. I met some women down in a place called San Martin uh, making tortillas. She makes a couple hundred tortillas a day, and that's how she's supporting herself. They're good tortillas. They're not Mexican tor tortillas. They're a little different, but they were very good. And uh, uh, so I, we're just seeing this sort of thing uh, throughout the project, where people are elevated by having a decent place to live, a place where they can securely spend the night and uh, get up and, and go to work. We also had our first baby born at the El Sonte project, little Bianca, uh, 14 days old when I met her. And uh, there she was in her new house. She will never know poverty housing. She will grow up in a decent home and surely have a, a, a better life uh, because of the good work that we're able to do down there. 
One thing that's helped us build on a larger scale is the use of inmate labor in El Salvador. How is that working out? Due to our partnership with the Ministry of Housing, we have access to the government. And we have used a good number of inmates uh, at our project. Um, and it's great for them. They get out of jail uh, for the day. Every day that they work is a day taken off of their sentence. And, and they, they work hard. And they're out. They, they, it's really delightful to see because these guys, they're kind of scary, some of them. But um, most of them are not. And an interesting thing is we have six former inmates now employed by our project down there. They got out of jail, served their time, and asked for a job, and we've employed them at our work site. So not only are we reaching out to the families that we build for, uh, we're, we're reaching uh, these folks just like Jesus said, you know, visit the prisoners. Well, we're inviting the prisoners out, and they're working with us, and it's going very well. In these photos, I see a lot of happy faces. Now, that's not what we saw in some of these areas when we first did, went down there a few years ago. Is this pure joy? Or are they just smiling for the camera? There is tremendous joy among these families, and it's simple things. I had uh, just chatting with a lady, and she was she, it, it had rained the night before. And she said, you know, I didn't have to worry about the rain coming into my house and ruining my things. For the first time in my life, I had a solid roof over my head, and solid walls around me, and a solid floor under me, and I was protected from the storm. I think there's great joy uh, in these folks. And they're very cooperative. They want to help. They, they, many of them want to get involved in other ways. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job paying their mortgages. And, um, and the joy is, is, is palpable. But you're right. In the early days, it wasn't joyful. And when we go into some of these communities where we're just starting, uh, like El Sonte and, and uh, San Martin, um, you know, they're waiting. You know, it hasn't happened yet. And they have a different way about them because they're still living uh, in, sh in shacks and, and pray f praying for the day that they can have a decent home. A lot of the s smiles that I see were while you were handing out Bibles and people help people was handing out Bibles. And a lot of these people already had Bibles, right? You know, it's interesting. We, had, we, we give a Bible with every house we build. It just, it's our tradition. And um, I, you would think that uh, in a strong Christian nation like El Salvador, that everybody would have a Bible on their, their by their bed, but they don't. Um, many don't have a Bible. And um, as a matter of fact, in this one village we visited, we had Bibles with us, but we decided we're gonna, we weren't ready to dedicate the houses. So we were going to save them. But, but I showed them one of the Bibles. They wanted the Bibles. So we ended up giving out, <coughs> we gave out more Bibles, <coughs> excuse me, than we had homeowners. And uh, uh, this one lady was just uh, gleeful to, <coughs> to have a Bible. So they don't necessarily have a Bible, but they do now. Lastly, I do see still a lot of shacks. Uh, life is changing there, but there's still poverty. Uh, we haven't cured it, have we? Well, life is certainly changing for families who are able to have a decent home. And, and we're just seeing it in manifold ways. Uh, life changes. The kids are able to study, and they, they, they have a greater confidence about them and in, in life in general. But there's a lot left to do. There are just hundreds of thousands of families in El Salvador and throughout the developing world who uh, are living in substandard circumstances. Uh, we can't reach them all, but uh, everyone we reach is blessed by it, and we're blessed by it as well. Uh, you know, it's just so gratifying to visit these families, see where they came from, see where they're at, see how their lives have changed, and knowing that you had a small part in making that happen. It's a true blessing. All right, David. Well, we appreciate you talking with us about all the big things happening in El Salvador. And I invite everybody to stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more to come. So bookmark fullercenter.org and follow us on social media. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.